What's up everybody, it's Russ. Welcome back to a very special edition of the Monday Morning Jumpstart. It's Labor Day weekend, a lot of people are off of work, off of school, and you are loving it. Matter of fact, right now I'm at the beach, and so I'm definitely loving it. Maybe before this thing is over, I can take you out on the balcony and show you my view so you can enjoy it as well. This week, I really want to talk to you on this subject. It's been on my heart about the captivity of negativity. Yeah, the captivity of negativity. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, create that title. I found it somewhere and I heard it, so I can't take credit for it. But the, the thought is has always been there for me to talk to you about um, how we live in a world filled with negativity. I, I'll just give you an example uh, from my life. When I was in college, there was a big test in one of my big business classes. There was about 250 students. And I had busted my tail studying for this thing and studied all night. And I, I finally got to the point where I was like, all right, I can't study anymore. I know everything on here. If I don't do well on the test, it's because whatever's on there was not on my study guide and I didn't study well enough for it. So I just kind of let it go. Well, I, I, I'm as ready and I'm as pumped and positive as I'm going to get. And I get to my class and I sit down and behind me, all I can hear about are these people talking about how hard this test is going to be. Man, it's going to be so difficult. This test is going to be impossible to pass. And they're just back there being so negative. And it began to creep into my mind. I can just feel it going into my mind like, oh my gosh, maybe I didn't study enough. I started questioning everything that I studied. Did I study that chapter? And they're back there, back there asking questions. Did y'all study this? Did y'all study that? And I'm like, oh man, did I study that? And, and so it began to infect my mind with negativity. And, and what I found out later is that they didn't study at all for the test. So because they didn't study, they began to ask questions and they began to question their own uh, ability to pass the test. And it began to bother someone like me who actually did study. And the point in all that is saying that whatever is in your heart and in your mind is going to come out and it's going to affect other people. And I don't know about you, but I want it to affect them in a positive way. See, if you've got negative thoughts surrounding your heart and your mind and your soul and you're just speaking negativity, it's going to infect those around you. Yeah, it's going to affect them, but it's going to infect them with negativity. But if you've got something positive coming out of your heart and your soul and your mind, coming out in your lips when you speak, it's going to infect them with positivity, and it's going to make things a little better. And so one of my favorite scriptures um, is uh, Proverbs 17.22. It says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And I don't know about you, but I want to live with a... Uh, a cheerful heart because I don't want to be cr uh, drying up the bones with a crushed spirit. And so here's the deal. I know people are going to say this about this uh, little video. Look, Russ, just because I'm positive, it's not going to change anything. And me talking and being negative, it's not going to change anything. And, and, and you know, to some extent, there, there are times when that's right. And here's what I mean. Like yesterday was the Alabama football game. If I went around talking about how bad we did, it's not going to change the way they play. Because I'm talking about that. But if I went around talking about how good they did, it's not going to change how good they did either. So in that case, it doesn't really matter if I'm positive or negative. But those around me need to hear me being positive. I would rather be positive. If it's not going to affect anything, then what's the point? I would rather be positive and be encouraging to those around me than sit there and be negative. I hope that makes sense to somebody. And here's the deal. The enemy wants us to be negative. He wants the world to, to be scared and in fear of what's happening around the world. He wants us to stay negative. But Jesus said he came that we would have life and life abundant. And that doesn't mean that we just walk around happy-go-lucky and, and we're just always so happy and giddy and positive all the time because there is a time and place for everything. But at the same time, we don't need to walk around feeding the devil's fire and fueling his fire of negativity in the world. And, and the word, I'm just going to just, just for a few seconds, I want to encourage you with this thought. The battle is in the mind. The battle is in the mind. The enemy is after your mind because if he can get in your mind, he knows that he can infect your heart and, and what, goes in, what comes in your heart is going to come out in your words and so he can affect a lot of people just by getting in your mind and messing with your mind. And so the word says in Romans 12 verse 2, let me just read it for you so I can read it exactly. Romans 12 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. It says to renew your mind. And listen, if you've been going through a negative circumstance, you've got some negative things going on in your life, I understand. I know where you are. And you might have a situation that's been different from mine, but I've been in some negative places. And I know that if you don't get out of those places, it will keep you captive. It will hold you captive. And the goal is to get away from that, to escape that, to renew your mind. If you stay there too long, it will hurt you in, a, in the long run. So if you've got something going on in your life, maybe you need to go to a doctor. Maybe you need to go to a Christian counselor. Maybe you need to fall on your, feet, uh, fall on your knees and, at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, you've got to take this from me. But sitting there complaining about it, talking about it, infecting other people with negativity is not going to help anything. So if you've got something going on, I'm not saying you should just not address it. You should just move on. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying you should address it so you can move on. And if you're like me and you are, you're already a pretty positive person, then you need to keep preaching the message. You need to keep telling people everything's going to be okay, even if the world ends tomorrow. If you've got Jesus in your heart, you end up in a real place called heaven, and that's good news. That's the good news that he came to bring to the world. And so we can be positive. We can be encouraging to people. Even in a dark time, even when things aren't going great, we can still be positive. And so I know I've kind of been all over the place with this message, but it's been on my heart as I hear a lot of negative talk going on around the world and around just social media. Everybody's being so negative about everything. What if we just started to be positive? What if we started to just smile more instead of frowning? What if we just started to uh, just tell somebody that God loves them instead of saying, why are you acting like that? Why are you doing that? We're always tearing people down. And hopefully, hopefully you got something from this. Hopefully you can walk away from this video, from your computer, from your iPhone, wherever you're watching this right now, and you can go love on somebody and you can, you can just put a smile on your face saying, yeah, Maybe he's right. Maybe we need to be positive. Maybe we just need to encourage other people. Now, there is a, a time and place for constructive criticism. I'm not saying that you, we shouldn't do that, but I'm, just ta I'm not even talking about criticizing anybody. I'm just talking about being negative in general. So when you walk away today, walk away knowing, yeah, it's a, it's a Monday morning, and it's a Monday morning that most of you aren't at work and you're not at school, so it's a good Monday morning. But I, wanna, I want every day for you, for at least this next week, to just you to camp out on the thought of being positive and to escape in the captivity of negativity because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to hold you captive. He wants to bind you in negativity. But Jesus didn't come that we would just stay fearful all the time. He came that we would have life and have it to the full. And remember, a cheerful heart is good medicine, people. A cheerful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And so no matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstance is, I would say choose to have the vision of positivity. Choose to escape the captivity of negativity and put a smile on your face. And that way you can put a smile on other people's face. Love you guys. See ya. Happy Labor Day. All right, all right. What's up? Hey, I told you I would show you the beach so you could see my view. Hopefully... Just to put some comfort down in your soul, make you smile a little bit, make you be a little more positive through the rest of the week now. Can't see my computer, hopefully I don't drop it. Boom! I love the beach. It's my happy place. Hey, thanks for watching. I want to encourage you right now to share this with anybody you think that might need it. Subscribe on YouTube. Like my page on Facebook. Help me get the word out to people about being positive. Help me to get the word out to people that they can be positive because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Love you guys. You're awesome. See you next week. Have a great week.